Hello and welcome to the seventh video in this series, Programming a Chess Engine in JavaScript. So we're carrying on with our setup of the position and we're slowly getting somewhere now. We're nearly ready to start actually setting up a position and printing the board to the console. And what we're going to deal with in this video is something called the position key. I've, first of all, before we do that, I've forgotten in the game board structure to actually add in something called the ampersand square. Uh, this is a square that's set if a pawn advances two squares as a starting move from its starting square. If you're not familiar with the ampersand rule then you won't understand that but please look up uh, online the rules of chess to understand where this is coming from. But it'll become also clear when we start setting up positions on the board. So a position key, what is the position key? Well the position key is going to be a number and it's going to represent, it's going to be a unique number that represents our position on the board. So if we have the start position we'll have a key of what looks like a, a random unique number and if we then move a pawn we'll have another key if we then move a, another piece for black we'll have another key and so on but these keys are meant to be completely unique and the way they're made and maintained in the position is using bitwise exclusive ORing. I'd suggest if you're not familiar with bitwise operators maybe to have a, a quick look on a JavaScript tutorial or C tutorial about bitwise operators. I also have one on the C programming tutorial on my channel. But it's quite simple anyway. And the first thing we need to do, and I've already added into defs.h, is we need a function to give us, I've, I've called it ran32, it's actually ran31, but it's a generation of a random number. And I've done it in this way here. I've generated basically four random numbers filling eight bits, and then shifted three of those numbers varying amounts to the left to get a good coverage of all of the 31 bits available to us in our number variable. And in the next video we'll actually set up creating our position key for the board. In this video I want to explain a little bit in main.js how generating this key works. If we think about our position, we need to think about what represents our position, what's you unique in our position. Well we've got unique is the piece on a square. So not only do you need your position key to represent the pieces you've got, but it needs to represent the squares they're on. So if you've got a piece with two knights, then the knights on the different squares will be a different position. So we need keys or random numbers for every combination of piece on each square. Then obviously we have our side to move, we have our castle permission of which there's 0 to 15, so we'll need 16 keys, random numbers to represent that. And then we have our one percent square, so we've got 64 squares available there, or just no square available to represent the key for the ampersand square. And what happens is, to get your position key, you simply XOR, so exclusive OR, the random number stored for each of those things. So random number for all pieces on squares and then it'll be XORed with a random number for the side and so on. It'll, it'll be done also for the castling permission and then the ampersand square. And this then gives you your unique key for a given position. And then if a piece moves, you simply XOR again the piece on the square from and XOR the key for the piece on that new square. And that maintains the integrity of the key. I've got a little example just to show how this is done so it can become a little more clear. Let's take a very small example. We don't have anything like a game board. But say we've got four pieces and there's only one, there's only one square, so we'll ignore the squares. And we want, to, say on our board we have all four pieces and we want to generate a key representing all of those pieces. So the first thing we do is to represent each piece, we generate a random number with good coverage of all the bits. We then get our key and we XOR in all of our pieces to get our key representing our position with four pieces on it. And I'll log this position key then in hex format to the console so you can see what it is. Let's though say that piece one gets captured well, to remove piece 1 from the key, we don't need to regenerate the whole key using just 2, 3, and 4. We can simply do this. 
And now the key with piece 1 out is actually exactly the same key as if we'd set key to naught and generated just piece 2, piece 3 and piece 4. And just to prove that to you, that's exactly what I'm going to do below this log statement here. Reset key to naught and then generate the key new just with piece 2, piece 3 and piece 4 and we can see what the key then is. And the key will be exactly the same as this key here. And that's exactly how we'll maintain our position key of our board. Every time a piece moves or is captured, we'll simply XOR out and in the piece on its relevant square. When the side changes, we'll XOR out the relevant side key. The castle permission the same thing, and also the same for the en passant square. And that way we'll maintain a unique key representing our position on the board. So if I just go into the browser now and drag the browser across and refresh. And now you can see the first key here is this 3D0B023F. And piece 1 out key is 71B31FC1. And now you can see that when I've rebuilt the key with no piece 1, it's exactly the same key as when we built with all four pieces and next, then XORed out piece 1. And in fact, another thing I can do just to absolutely reiterate the point is you can even XOR these in in a different order. So if I just copy this and I'm just going to rub over the code I've just done in here, but let's actually put these in in a different order. So we'll do 4, 2, 1, 3, and we'll end up with exactly the same key as we do when we do 1, 2, 3, 4. So I just refresh this, and there you can see that the two keys are exactly the same. And that's exactly how maintaining our position key works for the board. And you may be wondering if I now, I'll leave this code in here now until the next video, but you may be wondering why we actually have this position key. Well, the reason is we use it for things like repetition detection. We'll be storing inside a history array, which we haven't defined yet, all of the keys um, visited so far in the current game, for all of the moves in the current game. And at the end of each move, we'll go through all of these keys and find whether we have duplicates of these keys. And if we do, then we know that we've repeated the position. And a three times repetition in chess is a draw. So it allows the engine to detect a draw situation. OK, so then in the next video, because I've gone on a little bit long in this video with the explanation, we'll actually write the function which actually sets up this position key. So I hope that made some sense. And I'm aware that we're still doing a lot of preparation and definitions for the program but unfortunately that's the way it is because we've got quite a bit of stuff to define but we're not too far away now from actually taking in a position string and printing the board out to the console so thanks very much for listening comments questions criticisms welcome as always on youtube